So I'm here today on the border of uh, Algonquin Park, close to the Rain Lake access point, just at my uh, Algonquin Park off-grid cabin, which is currently under construction, as you can see. I'm currently redoing my solar system. I'm going to put those on a column and get up 25 feet. So solar system is a little temporary, but what I want to do today is um, I just had to replace my solar charge controller and it was the second one from Midnight Solar that uh, I've had problems with. So this time I've purchased um, a cheaper unit from China because I've been having better luck with uh, units from China than ones from the States. And that's the Sunny Sky Charge Controller. So today I'm going to give you a little rundown and compare that to the Midnight Solar Kid Charge Controller. So just moving inside now, here's the unit I purchased, which is the Sunny Sky MPT, MPPT Solar Controller. Um, after working with, uh, with Midnight Solar's uh, Kid Charge Controller, I really liked it. I was really hesitant. So when my first one fried, I actually replaced it with another one from Midnight Solar. Um, but now that I've purchased this unit, I like this a lot better and I'll, uh, I'll show you why. Alright, so I think you can get a good look at the screen here and it looks like I am getting some sun right now, so this is a good time to kind of show you. Uh, currently generating about uh, 700 watts or 25 to 26 amps. Um, I'm running a 24 volt system. This unit will automatically work with 48 volt, 24 volt or 12 volt batteries. That's all uh, auto sensing so you don't have to do anything although you can manually configure it. Uh, it's got a flashing light to tell you when you're getting a charge. Another light for DC load, which there, there is the uh, conventional load input on the bottom. I'm not using it because I, I run my loading straight from the batteries. But that function is there and it will track how much you use. So just to cycle through a couple of the, uh, the main screens, and I will dial the light back a bit here so you can still see it. So cycling through the main screens, we've got a status screen that tells you the, uh, the current temperature, uh, just confirming the battery setup, as well as confirming uh, time, date, and all that good stuff. So next, uh, it has the ability to graph your current daily uh, power um, being produced by the panels, and it's showing that I've had a maximum almost 30 amp charge today, but as you can see, it's the clouds keep coming by, so my uh, power generation is up and down and same for power um, you get a graph for that as well so basically since i installed this last night at sundown um, i've generated a total of 0.8 kilowatt hours and essentially 0.8 for today uh, it's about noon so i've been probably sun on for an hour or two but again it's it's been off and on cloudy so uh, generally i like the unit it, it seems to have more features than the the kid from midnight solar the only unfortunate thing is uh, the fan right here and this is the only thing that has a bad feature to it. I knew I was getting fans. It's gonna run when the unit gets hot. It's a bit of a mild annoyance, but it's only during daytime. So I actually feel a little bit better with an actively cooled unit versus the, uh, the kid from Midnight Solar. It uses just heat sinks to dissipate the heat, um, but the unit does get a lot hotter than I would like. The only mistake this manufacturer made is that fan is set up to come on whenever the generation exceeds about 250 watts. So it's not actually based on the temperature of the unit. It's based on the power being generated. And unfortunately that leads to um, some lost power because this thing's running essentially when this unit is cold. Um, my inverter, which I also purchased from China after uh, spending far too much money on a US made model, it has a fan that only comes on when the, uh, when the unit actually heats up. And that unit's performs superbly I really really like that but this one they did make the mistake on the fan so if you're the manufacturer watching this that's about the only item I would improve from what I've seen so far so uh, otherwise installation was easy um, the only thing was that I had a bit of trouble figuring out was uh, how these connectors worked at the bottom you remove this faceplate, you can access through into the screw terminals so you, uh, you turn to tighten the connection but again I had a heck of a time with the uh, the kids terminal screws they just were a nightmare to install and uh, the angle that they came in when you installed the housing always wanted to pull the wires back out so again well done guys much better and easier to wire um, so generally it's a nice looking unit I like it 
Um, I guess the only other thing here is to take you through some of the, uh, the menu setup, the screens, and show you some of the configurability here. Okay, so we'll do a bit of a walk through some of the configuration screens. So you access the configuration by hitting menu, uh, which brings up a, a number of uh, options which you can cycle through, and I'll try and improve the visibility there. Okay, so we've got uh, language settings followed by time and date adjustment, contrast adjustment, brightness adjustment and sound settings. So the first five are just kind of dedicated to minor uh, screen related stuff, sound. Then we get into record query, which uh, allows you to um, basically get into some of the fault codes. If there's ever a problem, it'll, it'll generate a fault code there that you can look up. Um, then the next one is the ability to delete that as well. Uh, you've got the system info query, which uh, just basically gives you information on the unit if you want to confirm that what you got is exactly uh, what you ordered. We've got the DC output settings, which uh, allows you basically to uh, have a look at some of the, uh, the settings for the battery and whatnot, but there's no configuration in that option. Uh, we got communication settings, which allows you to adjust some of the, uh, the modem communications with you want to hook it up to a PC. Now you do need one that comes with an optional RS uh, connector on the bottom. I didn't purchase that unit. There's also one with a temperature sensor that I didn't get. Um, so communication settings, as well as parameter settings. And parameter settings is probably the most important, so I'm going to start there. So first it's going to ask you for a password, which uh, you can find in your book under the password setting. Okay, and under this heading we get battery type, battery rated voltage, charge voltage setting, charge current setting, discharge limit, as well as factory so reset. Not a lot so of, uh, not a lot of configurability to it, not much beyond your basic uh, float um, absorb uh, voltages, that good stuff. Really, they've left a lot of the items kind of up to the unit to auto perform. So stuff like end amps and a lot of the advanced settings that you get in the kid, you won't get with this unit. So again, very pleased with it. Very simple to set up, very easy to use. Um, what I'll do now is I'm gonna take you and uh, show you the differences between the kid and uh, show you what happened with my kid and uh, give you a little bit more information about why I like this unit better. So here's one of my kid charge controllers that uh, has fried on me and I'll, I'll show you what happened. But one item I touched on earlier was how difficult it was with the screw terminals on this unit. So basically all your input wires come in through here, they come up in through one of two holes and you've got your screw terminals here. Um, the problem being is that you have to do a pretty tight radius up and in with your wires. Um, if you're using a heavier gauge line, you're using, um, uh, I think most of mine was 10 gauge for this unit. Um, they don't like to flex that well and they don't like to go around these bends and in here. So what I found was I had trouble getting enough torque on the screws without over torquing that the wires didn't want to pull out as soon as I installed the unit into the housing, which is, is this part here. That mounts on the wall, the unit goes in, and then these four screws tie it into the unit. So putting, this, putting the wires in was easy. It was basically installing the unit in the housing without having the wires retract. Um, the reason my kid fried, at least the second one, is, is still a bit of a mystery, and you can see it here. That fuse terminal has totally melted, and it actually welded, arc welded, the remains of the fuse in there. So I can't remove the old part of the fuse and uh, I can't install a new fuse. So this unit might be still fine. Um, I'm not sure why it was able to blow the fuse and cause this arc welding in there, um, but not exceed enough to actually blow the fuse. It's a very weird issue. Um, I could have spent some time dealing with support with Midnight Solar, but uh, honestly, with this being the second unit I've had, I really just rather at this point wanted to try some of the other options. Um, so this unit's good. It's got a lot more configurability. It's got a big heat sink, so you don't require an active fan for cooling. Um, you can get uh, mounts for boats in the marine version that it's a very nice looking unit. The screen's very small. The screens are not detailed, very detailed. Um, it does have a lot more options to configure, but I find how they use these controls to control the menus is a little confusing as well. 
All in all, it's a very good unit. I don't want to really knock Midnight Solar's products. It's just I personally had bad luck. Um, the first unit I had when I was using the, the load system initially, uh, there was a fridge, an old fridge that was tied into the, the line I was running off the load circuit and I didn't realize it. And that fridge fired up. It never exceeded the, the 30 amp rating of the load fuse, but so when the uh, motor initially powered up, I don't know if it was signal interference from the motor or if it was something else, but it totally bricked the unit. Um, within about two seconds, the unit never fired up again. And I just assumed that to be my own stupidity with having a fridge running off the load circuit. Even though I didn't exceed the 30 amps that it's rated for, um, I wouldn't recommend running off the load circuit on these units, at least without knowing why um, uh, load under 30 amps fried the unit. So they're good units. They're not bad. Uh, this runs about... Well, I want to say I was close to around $500 Canadian for this unit, maybe a little more. My other unit, on the other hand, was about $260 Canadian. So half the price, so I can buy two of those for the price of one of these. Um, time will tell. Obviously, I'm only one day in with the other unit, but uh, we'll see what happens. I will do an update once I get all my, all my new solar panels installed get my new solar column installed, I'll do an update, and at that point I should have a better idea uh, a month or so down the road how it's uh, the new one's operating. But anyways, thanks for watching and uh, hope you learned something from this. And if you're thinking about buying the uh, Sunny Sky, definitely gets my recommendation.